And speaking of looking in the mirror. Ooh, see that doesn't even feel heavier than my actual hair. Hey Vogue, it's Rina Sawayama and I'm Jake Gallagher. And today we're in beautiful Paris and we're gonna go to a Mugler dinner tonight. So what are we doing? Today we're gonna be doing an invisible ponytail. Where would you wear an invisible ponytail? Because we do it for shows. I think it's a great way to like change your look completely. Like today with your hair, I'm gonna be sewing on blonde hair. So your dark hair will be completely concealed inside it. Ooh. First of all, I like to straighten the hair through just so we have a nice smooth base. And I always like to use a heat protectant just to keep the hair healthy. I love the story of how we met. You know what, it was in 2015, I think. Wow, okay, so, so it was a long time seven ago. years ago. I was starting out as a model, and it was my first test shoot for the website of that um, agency. And you were the hairstylist. And what, did you say it was your first time? I think it was like one of the first shoots I ever really did. We've literally been working together since then. It's amazing. After that, you actually shot some press shots with the photographer. Didn't we have to pretend we were a couple? We were a couple. Yeah, in the editorial. So have you, I don't know where that photo has gone. I'm sure you can find it in the depths of the internet. So, Rena, do you have any hair heroes? There is a thing called like hairography, where it's like choreography but with hair. And that was all learned from Beyonce. Like Beyonce oh God, is the, the queen. Ultimate. Yeah, like she just almost knows where the tip of her ponytail ends and can manipulate that to like land on her shoulder. Almost witchcraft. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> so you're all ironed out now and we're ready to section you off and start the first ponytail. The reason I sectioned the hair off into two halves is to make it more manageable and tighter. It's helpful to tilt your head back, right? Yeah, so we can get all this bottom hair like nice and tight to the head. Because mm -hmm. sometimes if your head's not back and go up, it ends up being baggy underneath and you get like that looseness there. So what I like best about Rena is her creativity. She's always up for trying like things that other artists definitely wouldn't do. <laughs> and I think with us, it's like we've been friends since the beginning of our careers almost. So I think we just sort of have an understanding. We've grown together. So step three, I'm gonna create a center part and I'm gonna spray the roots of hairspray and pull it right back to join this hair to the ponytail I just created at the back of that. I like to use the end of the pintail comb down the forehead to the center of the nose, just to make sure it's all central. So what I like to do now is just to spray the root on each side with a strong hairspray. The earliest memory actually I have of styling my hair as a kid was hair, I had some hair straighteners and I used to put a chopstick in the middle of a straw and then twist my hair around it and then clamp the straighteners on top and I'd come oh out with these really tight curls and I would go to primary school with like like Annie curls but even tighter. I think it was in my 20s when I first dyed my hair orange. It was definitely a statement having colored hair is a real commitment. commitment yeah well. if I was wearing a white t-shirt while I was exercising <laughs> it would just bleed orange it was really chaotic <laughs> worst haircut I've ever had oh it's my passport picture it's awful and I have to look at it every time I travel <laughs> it was a bowl cut and but a bowl cut doesn't work on me because as you can see I have two very strong cowlicks yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so the bowl would just be broken, you know, it'd be like split in the middle. <laughs> so in 2024, my passport renews and I'll be getting the most fire snatched <laughs> photo. Maybe I'll ask She'll you to do it. Before. <laughs> yeah. That's my worst one. What about you? I've had too many. But there's one in particular that at the time I thought was really great. But my boyfriend, he was like, oh, it's hard, we need to shave that hair off. It looks so bad. And I was like, it looks good. What are you on about? When was this? It was when I had like, 
a weird fringe with like, a, it was like a short bowl fringe yeah. like this. Yeah. And then this was shaved like fryer tuck. <laughs> and I thought it was so cool. <laughs> Step four is gonna be braiding the hair. Just your typical three strand braid. We braid the hair because we need a base for you to sew on or if you're gonna use bobby pins, pin the hair extensions onto. And that's why I like to do it tight so you've got some grip. So this is step five where we're gonna conceal the braid. People have different ways of doing it, but like normally you'd buy a pre-made ponytail that sort of clips on and wraps around. Right, those can get quite heavy if you're trying to like... Yeah, it's like a lot of weight on one part of the hair. But this is actually more evenly distributed yeah, down. Yeah, evenly distributed. I'm gonna actually sew it in your hair, but if you were to do this at home, you can actually use bobby pins or you can use wig tape as well. So if I was to do bobby pins, like how would I put it in and what kind of bobby pins? Do you like the wavy ones or the straight ones? Just, and... just like your standard like bobby pin you can get from like a drugstore. Okay. What I would do is I'd like pin it through the braid that way and then pin it the opposite way so it sort of like locks in. Okay. But another way you can do this, if you've got like an old set of like clip-in hair extensions, oh, yeah. you can use the clips from those and like wrap that around the braid. Growing up in the Western world as a Japanese person, I was very opposed to being perceived in a stereotypical way. And that's something I've always been really careful from the beginning of my career. So even with styling, makeup, hair choices, I've always been very careful, I would say. So even since when I was modeling, one time I was on this job, they told me that it was a street style, like Harajuku street style, so you can do anything you like. But when I got there, they had prepared a kimono for me and it was for a tea company and they wanted me to serve tea the whole night. And they like tricked me into looking the most Japanese that I can and serving tea for people on High Street Kensington or whatever. And it was just really humiliating, so. I'm always very conscious of how I represent myself and what it means for people like me, or you know, whether it's like Asian American people or people who just want to be seen as themselves and not like a caricature. I think I've been really lucky with when I've entered this world and when I've started doing pop. I've had a lot more freedom and having time outside of the industry has given me perspective into what kind of person I want to be before what kind of pop star I want to be, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I try and be always listening to myself as to what I want to do, whether it's about the music or the songwriting or the production or whether it's about the hair or the makeup or the clothes. I like to use a piece of hair from the hair we sewed in and I like to wrap it around the base of the ponytail using like a strong hairspray or a gel with a hairdryer to like lock it in place without having to use a bobby pin. I like to just go around and like fill in any like lighter bits around here where you can see scalp. If someone's got finer hair around here, I just like to go in with a powder, like not too heavily, just to give it a bit of a shadow. You can use like uh, eyeshadow. But you as can well, use an right? eyeshadow. You don't have to use anything like special, but anything darker that matches your hair, to, hair color, you can just have that Kardashian hairline where it's thick from root to end. I'm so trusting of my team that I just barely think about it anymore, and I just trust them to do the look. And I'll probably look in the mirror and go, like, "Yeah, cool, amazing, <laughs> looks great," and I don't have to worry about it. And speaking of looking in the mirror. Ooh. We have a ponytail. There she is. Oh my God. That's amazing. See, that doesn't even feel heavier than my actual hair. It is about weight distribution, isn't it? It's all about the weight distribution. So my hair is snatched. Thank you so much, Jakey. And thank you so much, Vogue. I would love to see how you get on with this. So like tag me, tag Vogue, if you do recreate the hairstyle. And thank you so much for watching. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Bye Bug. Bug. <laughs> Into the abyss. Oh